My name is Dr. Larry Green. I'm the founder of Bokashi Cycle. I'd like to take a few moments to talk to you about how easy it is to convert all of your food scraps and your organic waste. I'm talking about any kind of raw or uncooked or waste material that you generate in your kitchen into something useful for your garden. In the process of fermenting that material, you can actually get rid of the garbage smell you'll get rid of the fly attraction, you'll stop vermin from coming around and looking for material they can feed on, and in the process, ultimately what you're going to end up with is our very beautiful plants. And this is simple and fast and efficient, far less troubling than taking your material out and putting it in a garbage can where you ultimately are going to have it ending up in the landfill or off some place to be composted where it's oxidized. So let's take a few moments and show you how simple that is. In order to do a fermentation process, we refer to this as bakashi fermenting. Bakashi is a Japanese word that means fermented organic material. The process involves the use of fermenters. We recommend two fermenters. And if we look at a fermenter closely, we're going to talk a little bit about the anatomy of the process, if you will. We have a five gallon capacity fermenter that has a spigot, and on the top we have a anaerobic lock or seal which means we're able to exclude the oxygen from the inside chambers and this is done because the lid is threaded and it has a gasket on it. This is very easy to close down and to remove. You can do this with one hand. That's important. It has to be easy. And If we look at what's inside the fermenter we have packets of culture mix. The culture mix is the most important part of the fermenting aside from the anaerobic chamber or the fermentation device because the microbes that are here are extremely valuable and efficient in the way they break down waste material. This is a wheat bran molasses based material that has embedded on it a number of different microorganisms and fungi that all awake quickly when the conditions are set properly where there's nutrients and no oxygen and what they will do when they're activated is release enzymes and the enzymes are the chemical materials if you will that are naturally occurring in nature that rapidly degrade and break down all of the waste material. Now this process is ten times faster than composting it doesn't require any turning, it doesn't require any aerating uh, and it's not only efficient and fast but it's far more complete. You will end up with twice the value of nutrients at the end of this process that you would compare to composting. And this process can be done all year round, all throughout the winter. It can be done right in your house or in your garage. And it's, it's extremely simple. In addition to the culture mix, of course every fermenting system should have some instructions so that the user can see at a glance how the process is done. It's actually simple. We have a dispensing unit that's used to shake and place the powder on the surface of the food waste. We also have a ceramic plate. We recommend using a ceramic plate in our fermenting system. The ceramic plate is a very important and useful piece of equipment because it allows you to compress and exclude the oxygen so that the food waste and the microbes are intimately interacting almost immediately after you close the system down and that leads to a much more efficient and rapid fermentation. We can use the word pickling instead of fermenting which is a little bit more of a common term. If you look at the inside of the fermenter what you will see is on the bottom, I'm not sure you can see all the details here, there are a number of holes in a plate and below that plate is a chamber that connects to this spigot and that allows the liquids that are being produced as the enzymes work their magic on the food waste to be extracted and used as a fertilizer on your house plants or out in your vegetable garden or on the grass. So let's, let's talk about the process and show how this works. It's actually very simple. At the end of each day you take all of your food scraps and you throw them into the bottom of the bin here. That can be fish, chicken, eggs, vegetables, fruits, eggshells, shrimp, anything that's organic the microbes can eat is faster faster than you can. After you throw the food scraps into the surface you're going to take some of the culture mix powder and sprinkle that on the surface just as you would add pepper or salt to your eggs. 
just a light dusting so you can see the, the dusty brown powder of the wheat bran molasses over the surface is all that's needed. Adding more of it will do no harm. Uh, you need to add enough to get it started and that's just enough so you can visually see it. Then you take the ceramic plate and just let the plate drop to the bottom. Gravity itself is more than adequate to exclude the oxygen and that allows those microbes and the food waste to intimately interact in such a way the enzymes will be quickly released and begin their work. This is somewhat similar to probably the experience that some of you have had and some of you have seen this in pictures. If you if you've seen a beautiful desert the day after the first rain, oftentimes you'll experience an incredible uh, view of flowers and plants blossoming literally almost within 24 hours. That's because those, those situations are set up and optimized so that they can react quickly to the ideal conditions. The same is true with the fermenting of the microbes. The microbes are actually extremely rapid in the way they turn on once things are right. After we put the ceramic plate into the bottom of the fermenter, then we want to be sure to seal it because the sealing keeps the oxygen out and allows the fermentation process to continue over the next 24 hours. At the end of the next day, we open this up, we remove the ceramic plate, we put another layer of waste material, a little bit of powder, plate back in, seal it up, and we repeat this process day after day. So like a peanut butter and jam sandwich, waste powder, waste powder, ultimately this is going to get filled. It'll take about six to eight weeks typically to fill a fermenter, but when that last layer of waste has gone in here with the powder, it's only been there one day. To complete the fermentation process requires typically about seven days, so that's why we have two fermenters. When this one's full, we put that last layer in, we set it aside, and we start to work with the next fermenter. And it'll take us another six to eight weeks to fill this. There's no reason to be in a hurry. Fill this one up, and then we're gonna go out to the garden and work in the garden with our fermented product. Now, in summary, what I've really tried to explain to you, and you'll see this is very simple, is that you don't have to add any extra material. You don't have to add any water. You don't have to add any carbon as you do uh, leaves and other things when you're trying to compost. You don't have to be turning or oxidizing. You just simply need to put the food waste into the bottom of the ferment and sprinkle it with some powder, close it up day after day after day. It's going to go through its normal cycle. The microbes work 24 hours a day. When you're ready to go out to the garden, you'll see the value of this fermenting process. Now, every three or four days while it's fermenting, you're gonna be able to open up this valve and collect about a half to a quarter cup of liquid that amber colored liquid, which we refer to as Bakashi tea, is loaded with microbes and nutrients. And you will find that you can use that as a wonderful fertilizer in your garden or in your, with your house plants or out on the grass. You just simply dilute it one to a hundred with water. It's very concentrated. That's about two tablespoons and one gallon of water. Spray it on the house plants or put it out on the lawn or put it directly into your vegetable garden. And you will see that the soil in the garden improves dramatically. It's not only the nutrients that we're returning to the soil, but we're also feeding the microbes in the soil, allowing them to expand in their population and their numbers, and that's what really makes it a healthy environment. Because over time, what's happened with most soils is they've not only been depleted of nutrients, but equally, if not more so, they've been depleted of their microbe population. And it's the restoration of the balance between microbes and nutrients to feed the plants that makes for a very healthy garden. So in our next discussion, we'll look a little bit more at what the fermented material looks like, and then we'll also talk about how to bury it. Thank you.